Do you want to learn how to dance like no one's watching? What about how to animate faster in Blender? Hi, I'm Wayne Dixon, I'm the animation and rigging instructor at CG Cookie. Earlier this month we released the trailer for Rig, which involved a whole lot of dancing from this character here. And people seemed to really enjoy it, and they were asking a lot of questions. How did you do that? Is it motion capture? How long did it take? Who did you hire to do all that dancing? So I thought I'd make a quick video to answer some of those questions, as well as give you some tips on how to animate faster. Firstly, who did all the dancing? Uh, that was me. I'll show you that in a minute. How long did it take? Must have been ages. Not really, it took less than two days to do all the animation, and that is because of the workflow, which I'll show you in this video. Is it motion capture? No, it is keyframe animation done by this guy with a technique called motion matching, which is what I'm gonna show you in this video. So let's go. <laughs> now the first step is to actually film yourself doing whatever it is you're meant to be doing. So here I am dancing in my house, and mind you, no one but myself was ever meant to see this footage, which is why I never cleaned it up. You can see I haven't put away the shopping, all the washing, and here is my son's small business equipment. He runs his own demolition company, which he practices at our house quite often, and he hasn't put away his work gear. But here's me dancing away in my house. Now I am actually dancing along to the music in the exact spot in the song. And these were all the takes that I chose for my dancing. You can also see that I flipped one of the snippets there. That was just so that I didn't have all of the character's actions pointing in one direction. But once I had this footage edited, this is what I stuck inside Blender. I stuck it on an image plane using the add-on import images as planes. Just to enable that one. Then when you go to file, import, you have images as planes. And you can choose your video footage. You can scale it and place it logically in your scene and you're ready to start animating. And then I want to find all of my key poses in my reference here. I'm going to do that just by setting a keyframe on our root control, even though it won't move. I'm just going to have one control that has keyframes on it so I can jump forwards and backwards to those specific frames. Now, what is a key pose that you ask? For something like this, it is generally going to be when a body part starts or stops moving, as well as when it changes directions. So I'm going to scrub through my footage and just set the keyframe on my root control on each one of those poses. That is when body parts start or stop moving or change direction. This means I'll have keyframes on random values, like they could be on ones, on twos, on threes, on fours. But for something like this, I don't want to go over four frames. So if I have a big gap of say eight frames or something like that, I'll find somewhere in the middle and I'll put a keyframe in there. And that's so I can capture as much of the information from my reference as possible. At the end of that step, I've got keyframes on my root control so I can jump forwards and backwards in time and that's going to match up with the key poses from my reference. Then it's time to actually get to work and animate or pose the first pose here. I'm going to start with the feet and the torso controls first. Once I match those, then I can shape the rest of the body. Now the first pose is going to take the longest, but it's important to capture as much of the information as you can. You're looking at angles, try and match everything, and the more accurate you are with this first pose, the rest of the animation is going to be a little bit easier. And now we want to do the second pose, where I'm essentially going to do the same thing. I'm going to try and match the pose as best I can, but also flip backwards and forwards to the previous pose to see how much things have moved. I'm trying to match the motion. This is the main concept of this technique. Then doing the second pose and all the other poses shouldn't take as long as the first one. But are you ready for the shortcut? <laughs> Now, if we think about the movement of our body and our character as being a bouncing ball, because everything's a bouncing ball, we can be smart about the order in which we do our keyframes. If we look at the hips here, it's kind of acting like a bouncing ball where it's bouncing up to a peak and then coming down again. So if I was just to bring up a picture of our bouncing ball, we're going from pose A to pose B to pose C. Now, a smart animator will actually let the computer do some of the work for us. First, you will create pose A, then you will do pose C, then you'll take what the computer gave you for the middle pose and you will adjust it. And in this way, the computer's doing some of the work for you. So let's look at that same concept on our character, wall of drawing of our character. Here are three poses, A, B, and C. First, we'll create pose A, then we'll create pose C, and we can take what the computer gave us for the middle pose and adjust it. That way, it's doing some of the heavy lifting for us. Essentially, I'm only going to pose every second pose and then tweak the one in the middle. Now, mind you, I'm still motion matching and doing all of that, but it's a much faster way of working when the computer does some of the work for you. So I continue that process of keyframing every second one, 
and then adjusting the middle pose all the way to the end till I've got all of my poses done. So I'm happy with what I've done so far and it's time to convert it to twos. There's many different ways of doing this, but I'm doing it the old school way because I want real keyframes on every second frame. So how am I gonna do that? Well, first I'm gonna deselect all of my keyframes and then I will start at the first frame and set a keyframe and then advanced every two frames setting a keyframe, regardless of whether there is one there or not. And that is because I want all of these keyframes to be selected at the end of this step. So now that I've set a keyframe on every second frame, I can invert that selection and delete all of the other keys. So now I've captured that animation on twos. And because I want the computer to show every frame twice, I don't want any interpolation between those keys. I'm gonna adjust the interpolation to be constant. And once I've done that to each one of my shots, it's time to move on to the final stage, which is polishing. This is where I can push things or pull things back depending on what is needed. However, I didn't have a lot of time to polish, so I just needed to focus on what would give me the biggest bang for the buck, so to speak. So here on the shoulder, I realized I could have actually pushed this a little bit closer to the reference. So I did a little bit of work on that. Over here in our trumpet section, I actually toned down the head quite a lot. I did match the reference as I was animating it, but because her head is so big, and she has that heavy helmet, the weight didn't feel right. So I brought it back a little bit so that it still captures the same concept, but it, the weight feels much nicer. And then over in the last shot, I did push the weight a lot more. I gave that character a lot more bounce and her head has a lot more movement. But the more time you have to polish, the better your animation is going to be. <laughs> All right, to summarize what we've talked about today, the first step is to film reference and make sure you clean up your house before you do it. Then stick that footage into Blender and try and match the reference with the size of the character. It's really gonna help you out. Then mark your key poses. That is usually when things start to move, stop moving or change direction. I did that by setting a keyframe on the root control so I can jump to those frames. And then you start motion matching, but work in a smart way. So rather than going pose A, pose B, pose C, you can often go pose A, C, B. Let the computer do some of the work for you. And then for this animation, I converted it to twos just by setting keyframes on twos and deleting everything else. And then we move on to the polish stage. This depends on how much time that you got. The more time you have, the more polish that you can do, but just pick the most important things and work on those first. But that's it, that's all I've got for you in this video. Hopefully you found that useful. Of course, you can learn more about animation over at CG Cookie. Not in this rigging course, you can learn all about rigging in this rigging course. It's funny, you release a rigging course, people wanna know how you animate it. If you release an animation course, people wanna know how you rigged it. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you over at cgcookie.com.